opponents now. Hello everyone, I am Cool Guy. Welcome back. It's Arc Week. We got a buff to Arc subclasses, and the one I was most intrigued about was Bottom Tree Striker, the way of the Juggernaut. It is insane, and I don't use those buzzwords at all. I never use them, but in this tree's case, it's insane. I encourage you to stick around to the end to see some of the things that you can do with it and to see what you're up against. Two big buffs happened, and both of them requires you to do different things. This subclass is now in the top three overall for neutral game, and it makes a case for the top overall, and I'm dead serious about that. As you saw from the opening clips, it's extremely good. There are various ways to run it, and today we'll go over some highlights with some things that I found out so far. Keep in mind with what I'm about to show, I'm fairly new to Titan, so don't hate me, especially at the end of the video. I have about 1,000 hours on the Hunter, 400 on the Warlock, and about 40 hours on Titan. But, as a content creator, as someone who follows Destiny, I do know everything about the Titan. And what's really nice is I don't have things like One-Eyed Mask. I don't have a lot of the exotics. I do have some, though. And the ones that I do have don't really get used that much by the player population, at least with how we're going to use it. Now, these subclass changes can change up your exotic use, and with Way of the Juggernaut, some absolutely shine. So let's go over the skill tree. One node that wasn't changed is Reversal. Melee kills immediately trigger health regeneration. And the other node that wasn't changed, Trample. Destroying enemies with Fist of Havoc extends its duration. There are two nodes that did get changed, two nodes that got changed in a big way. These changes allow you to do numerous cool things with the subclass. The first note to talk about today is going to be Frontal Assault. Strike an enemy with this melee ability to reload your weapon and increase both the weapon stability and weapon damage. Before, the weapon stability alone was really nice. It makes every weapon feel amazing. But for this perk, buff duration increased from 10 to 16 seconds. The buff timer is now displayed on the HUD. And the buff increases weapon damage, 25% in PvE and 20% in PvP. That's going to be key. For 16 seconds now, you get 20% more damage in the Crucible and 25% more in PvE. And along with all that, you get what appears max stability. And before, that max stability was enough. It felt great, but that damage puts it over the top now. Extremely good in PvE and PvP. When looking through the exotics, what can we do to make this the centerpiece of play? That exotic is going to be the insurmountable Skull Fort. Arc Melee kills grant health and melee energy. Now, the subclass alone gives you health already, but the reason to use it is going to be that when you get a melee kill, you automatically get your melee charge back. This means you can just keep chaining Frontal Assault over and over and over if that's what you want to do to kind of keep it at the forefront of your neutral game. For you to do that, you need to find ways to get melee kills. Generally, you're going to have a weapon that you want to use with frontal assault, or maybe both of them. And the other is going to be your finisher weapon. So it could be a shotgun beatdown, sidearm SMG beatdown, or even a double hand cannon shot than a beatdown. Whatever it is, make sure the final blow is going to get a melee so you can get your charge back. Let's first highlight some of the things that you can do in PvP with this perk. So we won't go over all of them. There are way too many. Maybe later on we can do build videos, but here are some important ones that I've found and used so far. High impact snipers can have the ability to one shot to the body. They do 189 to the body with frontal assault, bite of the fox, the aroma, things like that. Whatever your choice is, all you have to do is get a melee and follow it up with some body shots. However, I did make a video not too long ago about explosive rounds on a high impact sniper, specifically bite of the fox. There's going to be a link down below as well as a card on screen right now for that review. With explosive rounds, it splits the damage to 95 and 95 for 190 total damage. It gives you one extra and that can be enough. And we started all this off showing Frontal Assault with a Sniper because, again, you have to think, you get 16 seconds to start searching for kills. Next up, the 150, not 140, 150 RPM Spare Rations. And we just went over this one, and we showcased Swashbuckler times 5 on it. At base, it does 68 to the head, and with Swashbuckler times 5, it goes to 90. Now, this works perfectly with the Skull Fort because you get a melee kill to proc Swashbuckler. You get that melee charge back. You get Frontal Assault. With Swashbuckler times 5, now it does 108, so you can start two-tapping your enemies. And you can keep chaining that times 5 swashbuckler if you keep going and going. And that's kind of my favorite part again. You need a melee kill to proc swashbuckler anyway. So once you secure the kill, the charge comes back and you can just keep doing it over and over. A really good one is going to be a 110 hand cannon like the Duke. They do 92 to the head. They go to 109 with frontal assault. So for 16 seconds, you can two tap your enemies with it. Mine also has rampage as a lot of players do. As you two tap, you just increase the damage. It's brutal. And using a 110 with max stability is a dream because it hits like a truck. Pound for pound, one of the best weapons to use on the subclass is going to be Ace of Spades, because Memento Mori Ace of Spades does 112, so you can start two tapping. And remember, Memento Mori can chain. And this has been one of my favorite weapons to use because you can get a kill and have Memento Mori in your back pocket. You can just kind of hold on to it, and after you get a melee kill, you pull it out and just start two tapping. It's amazing. Another lethal one is going to be the Monarch. With Frontal Assault, it does 181 damage to the head, and it does one shot because you have poison damage. It's very lethal. I've been chased, turned around, quick bow shot, and just walk away. Now, you do need a perfect draw, 
of course, to hit max damage, but that doesn't change that much for me. It's so nasty with Frontal Assault. It's a must try. And quickly, we won't focus on it too much, but just when you thought that Luna and Not Forgotten couldn't get any easier or lethal to use, we add Frontal Assault to it. It's pretty silly. There are so many more, but if you focus on getting those melee final blows with the Skull Fort just to keep chaining and chaining, it turns any weapon into something feared. But you don't really need to use the Insurmountable Skull Fort, but it is nice to do it frequently. A lot of weapons in the game, the 20% damage buff will make them have a faster time to kill. Perks like Kill Clip, Rampage, Swashbuckler all make it even better, and most of the time, it's going to change the time to kill by a bullet or a burst. And that 20% pushes a lot of weapons to just enough, just enough to make them one shot or two shot now. It's amazing. So we haven't even talked about Knockout yet, but to me, this takes the bottom tree striker neutral game to one of the best in the game, seriously. And we didn't go over chaperone, shotguns, anything like that, but it bumps those pellets up, it bumps those slugs up, it makes the recluse do 30 to the head and 30 to the body. And it already has an extremely fast time to kill, but it makes it even faster, and you get the stability, it's just unreal. With frontal assault and PvE, you can just chain and chain and chain again, we're focusing around the skull fort, so when you get a melee, you get your two timers on the screen, knockout and frontal assault. Since you do have the Skull Fort, you can refresh these timers over and over again with a melee, and just always have the buffs, always 25% more damage. Pair it with an Ace, Kill Clip weapons, endless possibilities really, and when you see a Major, you can pull out a Whisper or something like that, and it will shoot like a laser because of the stability buff, and you're also doing more damage. We have all of this, and before we get to Knockout, the Super itself is ridiculous. It lasts for a long, long time due to the Trample perk, so not only does it have a great neutral game so far that we've talked about, we aren't sacrificing that for a meh or bad Super. And the Super can actually be a reason to run the subclass in the first place. Always getting health back, always getting back Super energy with kills. And before Arc Week, you saw these bottom trees every now and then. And you're going to see them this week because of Arc Week, but after this week, this subclass will stick around. And that brings us to Knockout. Once you deal 60% damage to your target, you get Knockout. So if you melee an add, you get Knockout. It gives you 60% more melee damage. And this perk just comes out of midair because of the subclass. You can just keep refreshing the timer over and over and always get the buff. And you can commit to this. In the background, I have on the Worm God Caress, just using melee in this loss sector. These gauntlet state melee kills increase melee damage for a short time. Additional kills extend duration and increased effects. This gets crazy. 65,000 melee damage at times. And after each kill, you have to think, you get your health back, you refresh your timer. It's just non-stop titan punching. You can get the stack to times 5 and you start hitting majors. Brawler would be really scary with these. I tried the Syntheseps and honestly the Worm God just absolutely crushes them as far as damage and overall utility. But here's where it really gets interesting and I'm going to leave you guys with this. If you go the knockout route for PvP and use knockout as the forefront of your neutral game, you want the Worm God Caress there as well. Since we get health back on melee kills, knockout refreshes over and over, you get it all the time. And once you start getting melee kills, you get increased lunge range from your subclass. That's another huge part. After you melee one enemy, get knockout, you have worm gods on. Once that timer is on your screen, you can start one punching enemies. This is one of those things that is that special. I've had 40 plus kill games only meleeing enemies. And if you decide to try this, use whatever you want to use to get someone low, a shotgun, SMG, whatever it is. But I've been running the Mida with it, because once I get a melee kill, I switch to the Mida for the increased movement speed, get close, and use that lunge range. And then I just start one-punching everyone. It's absolutely ridiculous. And the crazy part is Knockdown has no cooldown. It's just built within the subclass. You can do this at any time over and over. So I just wanted to show off some really cool things I found with this subclass, and honestly, this is going to be my main for a while. I value that stability so much with Frontal Assault and the damage. It's really good on Mida. It makes the Mida a three-shot headshot. The Cold Heart is really nasty with it. The last word takes one headshot and two body with Frontal Assault, and you get the stability. Any weapon in the game feels amazing. So with what we talked about, you can go pure Frontal Assault or pure Knockout. You can use any exotic that you want, but the Skull Fort will give you the best opportunity to use Frontal Assault all game, and the Worm Gods is going to be the best for Knockout wherever you are. But if you go in the middle, use another exotic, and don't commit to either one, the perks are going to be okay by themselves. If you're new to the channel, remember to hit the subscribe button. We're close to 75,000. We'd really like you to be a part of it. If you are subscribed, thank you so much for your continued support. What do you think about this subclass and Arc Week? What else would you add to the subclass for a possible build? Tell us about it in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.